Starting this, or not this weekend, but next week, drive sober or get pulled over. It's the Labor Day holiday, and this is something that pops up every holiday, drive sober or get pulled over. But it's still an issue that state police and other local law enforcement agencies in Louisiana see on a day-to-day basis, and that's impaired driving. What's going on with this drive sober, get pulled over campaign? I know that local police departments are getting grants, but what's state police doing, and how, how is state police helping with this effort? So we'll, we will be having a checkpoint uh, in, um, coming out soon. We'll, we'll tell you what Farris is going to be in. That'll be a, a, a news release for that. But, yeah, look, this is a real big problem. And, and while we think, oh, well, you know, it happens everywhere, yeah, it does. But let me just tell you some stats on this. You know, in 2019, there were six – there were eight people that died during this Labor Day holiday, right? In 2019, there was eight people died. Six of those – basically were were alcohol related which that's a high percentage but nationally 45 percent of labor day fatalities uh had a driver who who involved a driver that was drinking 45 percent nationally but in louisiana the percentage was 75 percent that were involved without had alcohol related so again that's a that's a huge huge difference 45 percent to 75 percent here in louisiana that that tells you something here. We we've got a culture, a drinking culture, right? And you know, look, that's fine. If you want to drink, that's that's great. But don't get behind the wheel. Have a plan. Have a sober driver. You know, a, some type of ride share program. You Uber, Lyft, something. Have a plan as to get to get from the party, not not just get to the party. You know, get from the party. Is important. So we want to really hammer that home. You know, this is this is just it's. And the most aggravating thing about this, or the saddest part about this, Ian, is that it, it is preventable. This is a choice that someone makes to get behind a wheel impaired and, and take someone's life. So that's why the penalties are so stiff, and that's why you know we really have pretty much a zero tolerance for getting behind the wheel, drinking and driving. And you mentioned having a game plan to get from where you are to where you're going, or back home or wherever you're going to wind up. And oftentimes you'll hear someone say, oh, I can do it. I've only had a couple of drinks. I've only had three drinks. Buzz driving, as the slogan is, is drunk driving. And no matter how many drinks you've had, if you get stopped and blown into that breathalyzer and it shows up .08, you're getting arrested. Yeah. Well, you know, it could be .000. If you've got any type of intoxicating medication in you or impairing medication in you, you're going to get DUI. So the DUI, the, the driving while impaired is, is not necessarily specifically alcohol, right? While we will test for alcohol, and alcohol is probably the most prevalent, that doesn't mean that it's just that. You can you can get um, uh, arrested for taking too much NyQuil or, or taking too much sleep aid or whatever you whatever you take. So it's the impairment that's the, the that you're breaking the law with. While alcohol is one of the causes of it, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the only primary cause. You know, the signs of impairment are there. You can still be arrested. So kind of, you know, taking prescription medication and mixing alcohol with it, per se. You know, you, your alcohol level is going to be low, but your impairment level is going to be much higher. I, you know, when we do these classes and we teach people how to uh, – we, we teach other officers how to do the field sobriety tests and things. We have live drinkers that come in and actually do drinking. We test them throughout the whole day to, to know exactly what the, how much the alcohol they've consumed and exactly what their level is. So whenever the people are testing them, they know the different, you know, they know the difference and they can spot it. There's been so many times when, I, when people are at a point oh eight, point oh nine, a point one, and I'll ask them, "Would you drive like this?" And and I've had people flat out say, "Look, I would drive like this today. I feel fine. I there, I I don't feel any of the effects per se, or I just feel a very very mild buzz, very very light. I would not think twice about getting in my car and driving. That's scary." That yeah. is very scary. So yeah. that tells you that, that, you know, the effects could be very, very minimal, but the impairment could still be there. And you just don't recognize it because, look, your judgment, your reasoning, your, your, your motor skills, everything is thrown off by alcohol. And that's the first things that go whenever you start drinking alcohol. So your perception of things is off of what you think you're doing as opposed to what's really happening. So, you know, it, the same goes if you feel different, you drive different. And it's very, very true. If you feel anything at all, you're going to drive a little bit different than you normally would. So, and 
again, the penalties, when you weigh the, the cost worth, weigh it out, it's just not worth getting behind the wheel impaired. You know, and we, unfortunately, some people learn that the hard way, you know, still to this day. In terms of driving impaired, then this is a question I've received. If you drive while you're sleeping, no medication, no alcohol, but you fall asleep behind the wheel, can you be cited for impaired? Uh, can you be cited for impaired driving at that point? Um, there is a statute that talks about um, about sleeping. And look, while the while it may not be necessarily quote unquote impaired, uh, like we know it to be, like alcohol, the 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 penalties are much much higher. The the penalties are a lot stiffer when it comes to falling asleep or sleeping behind the wheel. Um, you know, it, it, and it is it's it's very dangerous to do whenever you're behind the wheel and you fall asleep. I think we've all been in that situation before where you're dreaming of the roadway and you're not even open. Your eyes are not even open. I mean, I know personally I've been in that situation. <laughs> look, and that's. You know, that goes back to, you know, we look, we work shift work. We work long hours sometimes. And, you know, our, our department actually limits the amount of overtime hours we can do, uh, limits how much uh, a break, how much we have break between different. Uh, if I work, I've got to have an eight-hour break between the time I work to the time I go do an off-duty detail or something like that. They're, they're, they mandatory have that break in there. Same thing as the, the, the truck drivers. You know, they, they, they require these guys to take a break for a reason, and that's to keep, that's to keep them safe and keep the roadway safe. It is dangerous to fall asleep behind the wheel. And, again, you know, the penalties are, are much, much more strict when it comes to that happening. Thomas Gossin joining us this morning on Acadiana's Morning News. If you missed any of this, we'll be posting the interview at kpel965.com and the KPL mobile app a little bit later on this morning. Thomas, before you go, any final thoughts? Look, I, yeah, I just want to say this. This year, this this month is going to be National Child, Child Seat. Uh, there, we have the safety check on a, on Saturday. I'll be uh, talking about that a little bit. But again, I just want to remind people, um, you know, make sure those child seats are done properly. We do that every eight, eight o'clock to noon every Wednesday. Eight to noon every Wednesday. Not and it's not a charge ever ever to get your, your car seat checked. Make sure it's installed properly. Coming by, it's a free service. Every Wednesday, 8 o'clock to noon at Troop I, we do that. Again, the laws change a little bit. Know these laws so you keep your kids safe and you kind of stay out of trouble. And know that, you know, again, 13-year-olds must be in the, you know, must be 13 or older to be in the front seat when there's a rear seat available. So 12 on down needs to be in that back seat. Thomas Gossin joining us this morning, as he does every Tuesday morning on Acadiana's Morning News. Thomas, we appreciate the time. Safe travels to New Orleans, my friend. Thank, appreciate it. Thank you. Right, take care.